This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where it's all about getting the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Brought to you by Itumar Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com. Now, here's your host, Kevin Pruitt. Welcome to the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we talk with successful marketing experts about ways to build and grow your digital marketing agency. My special guest today is the founder and CEO of Waymaker.io, an intelligent business management platform that helps leaders build a better business in 30 days. He's a thought leader in strategy, systems, and leadership development. As the founder of Waymaker.io, he's led the creation of Waymaker's Leadership Curve, a revolutionary way of building clarity, alignment, and remarkable results in any organization. Once a successful marketing agency owner himself, join me in welcoming my friend and a great guest to the podcast, Stuart Leo. Stuart, thanks for joining us, buddy. Hey, Kevin. It's uh, it's so good to be talking with you. And uh, yeah, well, thanks for having me. That's uh, that's that's a joy to be here. <clears throat> I know that there's so much more that could be said, and but I, you know, you, we try to keep our bios short so we can get into the meat of the matter. But uh, round that out a little bit for us. Uh, what did I miss? Um, well, I don't know if it's about what you missed. Do you, whenever somebody reads my bio, you always sit there going, "Gee, that sounds pretty good." It doesn't sound like my life. Um, <laughs> Who is that guy? Um, <laughs> who's that guy? That's, no, no, it's not. It's not true. I think. Um, uh, look. Today, um, I lead Waymaker, uh, which is, as you said in your opening notes, it's leadership software, and it's there to help leaders lead growth um, in their organizations, and it's there to help um, coaches, consultants, strategic advisors um, uh, identify the gaps in their business um, or their clients' business. Um, really quickly and easily and embed uh, leadership practices, um, strategic growth practices to close those gaps and rinse and repeat that process to create a continuous improvement cycle and a, and a leadership mindset, a goal mindset within either their clients uh, or their organizations. Now, almost every great service or product was born out of a pain that a, the entrepreneur experienced themselves. And, you know, you can go back to your time where you were running and you're a successful agency and, and leading yeah. to this point. So what walk us through kind of quickly that that serpentine path that you took that that non straight line. It was definitely a non straight line. <laughs> um, and it was definitely out of pain. And it was actually definitely in a strategic advisory marketing context that Waymaker really had its genesis and roots back in 2012, 13, 14, um, uh, when I was running a consultancy previously. And the problem was this, uh, clients would come to us and say, we have a problem in our sales or a problem in our marketing or a problem with our brand, or uh, we don't know how to represent ourselves or we you know we're not selling or growing as quickly as we should all those classic problems that um advisors get from their clients <clears throat> the problem with that was that they would often come with a symptom and want the symptom solved too often and be adverse to discussing the root cause and uh, for example, uh, and, and you know, the world hears this every day on volume 11. Uh, we don't have enough leads. Yeah. Um, yeah, no business does. Uh, that's like saying, um, my business count doesn't, my, my, my account doesn't have enough dollars in it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it ne never does. Um, uh, but what's, that's the symptom of the underlying problem. And so an organization would, and I'll use that as the example, would would go and spend a lot of money um, and generate more leads, but then those leads may not be captured correctly, right. qualified correctly, sold through a correct sales methodology correctly. Um, you know, and what was the root cause or causes in the underlying skills and systems of the organization 
that meant if you put 100 leads into this business, you were dropping out with 10 sales as opposed to stepping back and saying, hey, you know what? If we did a little bit of training, if we implemented a consistent sales methodology, if we put them into a CRM um, that worked, uh, you know, all these basic things that um, you kind of talk about as opposed to the frantic, reactive, urgent nature of, oh, no, we need more leads. And I'm, and I'm kind of picking on that one because it's the most common. And so, so it'd be like, right, we... The, we need a new website because we don't get enough leads or we need a new ad campaign because we don't need right. enough leads. And um, and so you'd constantly do these things and you you check in with a client, you know, post as you're, as you're working with them and it's, it's not actually solving the problem and you're like, well, what's going on? And so what birthed out of that journey of, <clears throat> of going, you know what, we, we, we're working on symptoms, not problems. Uh, was the development of a diagnostic tool, which is really now the the intelligent heart of Waymaker um, as it's grown, uh, that you would put through the organisation, and it sounds simple, but uh, you would it would surface um, a, a maturity on the skills of that organisation or or that department. Let's say it's sales. Um, and the systems in place, and in a, and and very quickly in kind of five to fifteen minutes, you would see the root causes emerging, and we were able to start asking questions about well, if you spend a hundred thousand dollars on a new website, um, is that actually going to fix the root cause, or if you spent twenty five thousand dollars on sales training? $25,000 on um, optimizing your CRM and then $50,000 on lead generation, could you actually make more sales? And it was, it was about helping the organization understand, actually, I'm trying to solve a symptom. Right. As opposed to stepping back and saying, you know what, if I fix these underlying causes, I might, I might fix my business. And in doing so, I might actually take my business from A to B or B to C. I might actually just lift my business so that the effect of our work, if we were there or not next quarter or half, would be better. And it would have this long standing. I'm sorry, my standard is A to Z. If it doesn't go A to Z, then, <laughs> then uh, I, I think the system's broken. But uh, let me let me rewind just a just a second. Sure. You said you said when we got this dialed in in 15 minutes, you could tell what some of the key determinants were that, that were causing the issues. And so I, man, I got, I have 10 questions I want to ask all at one time, but, but I, I even go Great. further back than that. When you're developing the, to me, the, the issue that the, the big rock that you had to get, you had to move out of the way was just some tool that was, um, I hate to use the word over, overuse this word, but it's such a descriptive word, industry agnostic. You know, yes. that you, you had to say, okay, I don't care what you're trying to, what widgets you're trying to create or sell, mm. what it's going to work with that or what service you're trying to provide. So how did you dial that in? Because I mean, I, I can see all kinds of issues that you're, you know, send me more leads, but if I have a lousy sales department that can't capitalize on those, or if I don't, can't even capture them, you know, I can't even... My CRM's broken, so I can't <laughs> even find them after after you you sent them to yeah. me. I mean, I, yeah. I can see all these issues, but it seems like that the industry would have would maybe be skewed a little bit in certain areas. You know, like sales may be a lot more important in, in certain industries than others. You know, unpack. I, I I could keep talking, but unpack that a little bit. Yeah, there, I think there was. Um... Two key questions points. in there. <laughs> yeah, there is. There's, um, but there's two key points I think we need to make here um, around uh, the evolution of of this tool, this this sort of intelligent diagnostic engine. Um, the first assumption we made and we tested and worked um, was that we said, you know what, all organisations are different. Um, however. At their root, they're all the same. What do I mean by that? All humans are different, 
but mm-hmm. they're all sitting on the same biology, on the same central nervous system, on the same neurological system. You know, there's a set of systems. In fact, um, when and we really use the human as as our typology here. Um, a human has 17 systems, <clears throat> um, 10 odd trillion cells that are working constantly together, mostly in harmony or sync, depending on what you do to your body, um, uh, to help you do what you do on a daily basis. Um, If you uh, walk into the doctor and say, hey, I've got a headache, and you keep walking into the doctor every day saying, hey, I've got a headache, at some point the doctor says, "Um, what did you do yesterday? And if you said, well, I went out to the pub and I went drinking with my mates, watching the football and sports till 2 a.m. Um, no but I don't sleep. know why I've got a headache. Right. No sleep. <laughs> um, he's he's going to say, actually, you know what? Let's maybe think about, you know, what you're doing um, and how you're acting and behaving. So the assumption there was if we treat an organization like a human, all organizations are different, but they're sitting on a set of underlying um, traits and principles and behaviors that by and large are the same. It doesn't matter who you are. Hmm. And, and one danger of that is getting down to something so small that it's kind of, you know, so what it didn't really tell me anything. Um, so we had to kind of find a level where it was still insightful. Um, yeah, and equilibrium, you know, that, yeah, exactly. Um, and so that allowed us to start digging into, um, okay, how do we, how do you uh, dissect um, uh, the ideal organization? That's kind of what we were kind of journeying on. At the same time, there was another assumption, hypothesis we had, was that <clears throat> um, too often when you run a diagnostic or you're using AI or you're using something to solve a problem, um, you're 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 trying to get to the perfect answer straight away, and actually, perfection may not be the thing you want to chase. Rather, direction, territories, concepts, and um, uh, you may want to involve humans. And so, the at the second assumption we made was <clears throat> there'll be better insights if the diagnostic doesn't try and answer everything but rather surfaces the right areas that when the people that took it get in a room and start asking questions of why within the next 15 to 20 minutes they'll have a conversation that's 100 times more intelligent right than if they hadn't spent the 15 minutes before that taking that diagnostic is that making sense specific to their case correct it's a bit they know the foundational history and and finer points of whatever they're trying to solve. Yeah, that's a great, great point. It, yeah, and and so <clears throat> even though we're using a technology tool, we're actually involving the humans in finalizing the final answers and outputs. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so what that did was it was it it gave us the ability to to start to build a data set to go. Here's what the ideal organization looks like. Um, in terms of skills and systems. And, and when I say skills, I mean things that the organization knows how to do and systems, processes, technology, or, or repeatable processes that the organization has put in place that sustain the skills. And if we could map that, and then if we could rapidly identify the underlying territories for action, then the intelligence in the room, the people who are actually running the business would very quickly go, well, combined with my experience and my knowledge of this business and the fact that this has now shown me and highlighted the areas that resonates, that's true, therefore we need to do this and they're applying their intellectual knowledge into the final actions and then agreeing yeah. those. Yeah. Is that making sense? Absolutely. Um, it's an interesting, it's, it's a really interesting kind of strategic approach to, you know, I think you, you talked about it earlier, you know, it, it's not necessarily that we're arriving at the final answer using the tool. We're putting, you know, the leaders in place that they can come up with that final solution. I mean, I wrote down a, 
an interesting note. I mean, sometimes I try to paraphrase just so I have to dumb things down so I, I can understand them. But the idea was, you know, it's like the best solution is directional, not perfect. You know, it's that's like, it. You know, yep. you're headed in a you you want to lead lead them in a direction where they can discover this themselves. That, it, yeah, and and there's an element of the principles of coaching in there For or sure. advisory yep. where. <clears throat> You know, let's go back to the example of the doctor. I, I keep going to the doctor every morning saying, oh, my head hurts, you know, um, give me some give me some pills to make it stop hurting. When the doctor steps back and says, okay, well, what did you do last night? Um, I went out, you know, had drinks with the boys at the pub. Um, and then he says, hmm, and you keep doing that every night. Hmm, yes. And uh, you keep waking up feeling very sore and unhealthy. Hmm, yes. Do you think that if you stopped doing that, <laughs> that you might feel better? Um, it's you becoming self-aware of the underlying issues as opposed to the doctor just saying, don't do that. And and I think that was one of the things we stumbled upon in this journey was <clears throat> this difference between what a consultant is, what a coach is, um, what a trainer is. and um, And when we learned that, especially when I learned that it was like, ah, actually you've got to learn to play the right hat at the right time when you're providing these advisory services, a consultant, and, and, and you know, this might be useful for listeners. And this is what I learned. Somebody taught me this, um, uh, a consultant holds the IP, knows the answers, knows to how to solve the problem. Company has problem, um, says, can you fix my problem? Consultant says, yes. Consultant fixes problem. Company says, how did you do it? Consultant says, well, that's my IP. I'm not going to tell you. You just hired me to fix the problem. If you want the problem fixed again, I'll come back and do it. Okay. Um, company has problem. Um, hires coach. Um, coach asks lots of questions. Company realizes, oh, that's my problem. Coach asks lots of questions and helps them direct where to go. Company says, oh, that's how I'd fix this problem. Um, company walks away knowing how to repeatedly identify and fix problems. Mm. Does that make sense? The coach yeah. coach imparts that knowledge. And, and that's kind of different to a trainer. A trainer says company has problem. Trainer holds knowledge. Um, trainer walks in and trains company on how to do the tasks so that they can do those, shifts the knowledge in, company goes away and can repeat that process. Making sense? If they apply Which it. is if they apply it. Yeah. Um, which is different to a um, uh, a mentor, which often senior agency and advisory people are to their clients. Um, a person unsure of where to go next, what to do. Mentor who has maybe trodden that path or has a lot of experience in that path, maybe marketing or sales or service. Um, a senior professional provides um, uh, direction and encouragement and shows and, you know, kind of shows some of the shortcuts on what to do. They're, they're mentoring them. Um, there's a mentoring relationship going on. Uh, and lastly, um, the, the art of facilitation, um, company um, needs actions or prioritization. Um, facilitator steps in, doesn't tell people what to do, but rather draws information out from different people in a meeting or a workshop um, coordinates, organizers, and helps them decide what's most important and, and act. And what I'm kind of describing is the difference between consulting, coaching, training, mentoring, facilitating, which are all skills we do in our agencies and our consultancies, um, but we don't really understand the differences in those skills mm. and how to leverage the value in those skills. And in fact, that our clients are very willing to start paying for some of those services. Whereas often we're giving away, and I see this all the time in particularly marketing agencies, they give away the coaching and the mentoring and the advisory and they charge for the consulting, which might be the lead generation, the problem solving. Um, and they give away all this stuff. They give away four out of the five in order to get to the one and the one is just solving a symptom 
And yet the other four are actually about solving the underlying problems. And when we started to learn that and realize that, we actually started to be able to increase our advisory, in fact, increase our services, but increase our advisory to the client because we learned <clears throat> that advisory was the the application of those five skill sets at the right time in the right way during the relationship of working with the client. Is that making sense? Uh, and I think, you know, my, my history, even, even in the advisory space, you know, have, have friends in, in the advisory space and colleagues in Australia, even talk to, it's interesting because I think sometimes even as advisors or consultants, they're focusing on one of those five, you know, they're not, they're not, there's not a comprehensive understanding of how holistic, you know, a company needs you to be, you know, in, in that space. And I, it's, it's really interesting if you did, you, as you, cause I can even hear, you know, you uh, bring the kind of the marketing agency history in that, in the storytelling, you know, of, mm -hmm. of the brand and of the process to get to Waymaker. And I know that, you know, you provided these services to a number of different clients how have you how have you kind of held the community together of you know current clients past clients colleagues you know companies you partner with um because this is such a an intertwined or networked space that you're operating mm. in mm. yeah um we're very young in waymaker we're you know really just a little bit over a year old in market um uh, but in that time, we've started to build a an advisory, a partner community. So we have two kinds of clients. We have direct customers of Waymaker, businesses that come on board, start using it to, to apply these methods and diagnose, plan, deliver. <clears throat> and then we have coaches, consultants um, who use the tool for advisory services. Yeah. And um, we now have advisors in UK, um, uh, Europe, um, North America here in Australia and it's a growing community and I'm, I'm not sure we do um, well this is this this is me the CEO and founder speaking when I say this <clears throat> what I hope for us to do in this space is far beyond what we're currently mm -hmm. doing now but if I go back a couple of years when we were thinking about how do we build this platform and how do we how do we train and empower a coach or a consultant in downtown Houston or upstate New York or Soho, London to, to use what is actually a reasonably complex tool. And we've never met them. They're in a completely different country, not entirely. You know, how do we do that? That was, that was actually uh, one of our greatest, it was one of my greatest questions. You know, how, how can we solve that problem? which is really an execution problem for us as, as Waymaker in the startup phase. And, and in reality, it's, um, it's about um, having two things, which is kind of true to who we are as Waymaker. It's having skills and systems that they can use. So for example, the software is the system. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the process, the tool. Um, and we have a, a partner license that is designed for coaches and consultants that runs a partner portal that kind of helps them through the journey of signing up clients and working with clients. And then we have skill development through Waymaker Academy, where, which is something we learned from partnering with organizations in previous lives um, in MarTech and sales tech. Yep. Um, Cause I do think um, you know, online academies, um, the HubSpots, the sales forces, the mm -hmm. Adobe's, they do it well. Um, in fact, um, I've had conversations with universities and academics and they're like, man, like their, their learning curriculum's like more effective and better thought yeah. out than what we've got. You know, it's, I mean, and the, it's current, real time, real time, current so. and, and real time updating Practical. because it's digital. You know, right. if, if something changes next quarter, <laughs> then it's changed and updated. And <clears throat> it's not like you've spent a hundred dollars on a textbook. And gosh, uh, that was last year's textbook. Now it's a bit out of date. 
No, and, and not only that, it's on your phone, it's on your device. It's So one of the things we learned out of that previous life of partnering with technology companies, which we had some great successes and some great fail, failures at, I'll be honest, um, uh, was this idea of bite-sized learning and giving people learning pathways. And so we knew we had to start doing that. And we knew that if we could, um, a coach or a consultant in Dallas, Texas with um, um, the beginnings of some courses and content and that related directly to the system they were using that they could use with a client right then and there that at a base level, they could actually go and generate a few thousand dollars a month repeatedly. And if they, as they got better and better, they could turn that from one to two to three to five to 10 and that you could actually apply the philosophy of Waymaker, which is this continuous improvement on skills and systems. And so that was, that was a, when we were building Waymaker and thinking about that, I was dead scared about that. That was the, I'm like, how the heck are we going to do that? And, and as we started to apply some of those best practice principles here, learn this, apply this, use this tool, it started to come together. And, it's a and we had, a, it's a win-win. Yeah. And you have to, um, you have to be confident to give a lot of your content away. Um uh, and that's, you know, that's the classic content marketing kind of premise. Um, not all of it, uh, <laughs> not all of it, but <laughs> enough of it. And, um, and so we knew that in this space, the typical launch and pathway was, you know, some guy goes and writes a book, becomes a bestseller says, Oh, everybody loves my content. Now I'll go put some tools together and software, um, and we just knew that that wasn't the right way to go in the 21st century. That was a very 20th century mindset. So, so we try, we've tried a different path. It seems to be working and uh, not seems to be, it does work. Um, uh, and so now we have um, a very strong academy, Waymaker Academy. But in all honesty, if you need clarity, alignment and focus to grow your business, you, you have everything you need for the first couple of years of your business to get going. Um, it's not Harvard Business Review. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's not meant might to be, be that. better. <laughs> might be more real time. That's right. It's um, no, That's I'm not theoretical. sure about that. <laughs> um, but it but it does draw on the great leaders from those institutions and the great lessons and the great to apply into your business. So so skill development systems. Um, and then I think our future is very much about knitting the community together, which is something we probably haven't done as well as we could have to date, but that'll be in our future. You know, the best, the best speech is future speak. You know, it's uh, it's uh, like speaking today in the reality of what it's going to be in the future. So yeah, that, that's, and it, that, I think that's true of all of us at, at some level. I mean, that's, you know, you're speaking to that, that future reality. So I, I am curious if you, you know, can put your, marketing agency hat back on at least half of it back on and then you know have the present day where you're you're more leadership development the consulting space um business development so what is the what is that intersection that marketing agencies i guess struggle with the most that you think this solution could provide you know that's whether it's a but it's a solution that they're actually <laughs> capturing themselves or capitalize on themselves or their, you know, maybe it's a white label JV partnership mm. idea, you know, utilizing some of the skills and resources you have, where's that intersection, you know, just real quick. Um, right here. And this is, this is getting straight to the point. If you're a marketing agency um, and you're a real marketing agency, okay, what does that mean? I'm going to unpack that. Um, <laughs> Peter Drucker said a long time ago, you know, godfather, grandfather of business, um, that there's marketing, there's innovation, and everything else is an overhead or an expense. That the sole purpose of an organization is to go out and create a customer. If you're um, a marketing agency, then if you are providing marketing advisory to your client, then you are speaking into and working with the very DNA of what makes that organization tick. 
too often marketing agencies um, pretend to be marketing agencies when they're really in advertising, promotion, digital lead generation, or some other what I'd call singular element of the marketing practice. So I want to qualify and quantify this because there'll be some listeners going, what are you saying, Stu? Like I'm a, I'm a brilliant, fantastic, you know, SEO agency. Are you telling me I should be doing something else um, or I'm not a real marketing agency. Um, too often we put the term marketing as the create that you know the act of creating a customer um onto some of the functions of what marketing does so um i'm a firm believer that great agencies have a single minded core focus and problem that they solve and then they can scale that so you might be um you might be lead gen you might be um, SEO, you might be social, you might be sales tech or martech. However, um, and that's a good thing. However, the deeper, and it depends on your business model, um, but the deeper you go with your client, if you're going deep with clients, as in, um, you know, we, we have a deep relationship um, in this marketing element, then you have a deep insight on that pillar of the marketing function because marketing is a pretty complex space these days. Yep. Um, which means you, you actually have the depth of expertise that can speak into the very DNA of that organization. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, if you're, if you're an SEO agency um, and you've gone, that's our swim lane, we're going to stick to that. And we're going to try and do everything. Um, uh, which is a good thing. Um, you're going to learn things about that agency that are worth a lot more. Sorry, you're going to learn things about your clients that are worth a lot more than just providing SEO. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, you're going to learn the nuances of specific content and keywords. You're going to learn digital behavior. You're going to learn how customers are thinking feeling breathing and you're going to be able to put your finger on changes in attitudes and beliefs and you're going to be able to to take that to your client to be able to speak into that area of the customer and that's actually the advisory piece in that agency mm. is this making sense yeah um, there's certainly overlap yeah and it's it's not overlap it's integration it's integration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just providing the service. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, uh, getting back to the crux of this, um, the function of marketing is identifying the problem in market and developing the solution to solve it. That's what marketing does. Um, now, within marketing, there's advertising, promotions, distribution, channel management, partnering, sales, serve, all these. But if you come back to what what is the function of marketing is to identify that problem, wrap a solution around it, and then to go and put a bunch of things together that turn it into a business. And too often, I think, as marketing professionals, we've let ourselves be downgraded into um, functional to doists, people doing something. <laughs> I love that. As, a, <laughs> as opposed to stepping back and going, actually, I've got the knowledge that can speak right back into the continuous improvement of ongoing identifying and solving this problem and making this business better. And so that's really what I want to highlight because that's what Waymaker's doing. And that's, is that kind of answering your question? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I, um, it's, it's interesting because I, I think, uh, Stuart had two cups of coffee this morning instead of just one. So he's, he's, uh, he's sitting there Thursday morning. I'm sitting here Wednesday afternoon. It's, 
it's uh, I, I actually I wish you would you could tell me that for like sports scores and stock market. So I <laughs> I'd like to have that twenty four hour hour advance notice. But uh, well, well the you, sun's up. It's a beautiful day, so it's going to yeah, be a great day tomorrow. Certainly. How about that? Yeah, thank you. I, I hope that's true here. But uh, yeah, so I I've obviously unleashed the kraken because we have just scratched the surface on what this guy can bring to the table. So man, we're going to have to schedule another another like a two point interview to 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 kind of. <laughs> wrap things answer questions that we've generated in this first one but um so it's it's really interesting to to see the the kind of the journey of waymaker where your you know current state and i appreciate your your you know frankness and honesty in in describing that you know you're we're not we're not where we want to be but we're certainly headed in, a, in the right direction but um i i want to shift here just for a second and mm. i want to shift into a kind of a this is our, our kind of rapid response, you know, time sure. here at the end. You're going to think these are crazy questions. Why in the world are you asking me? But there's a method to the madness here. Love so it. Love I it. want you to just answer as quickly as possible. Just the first thing that comes to mind. So uh, did you get along with your parents growing up? Uh, most of the time I did. Yeah. Yeah. We had pretty good relationship. It is amazing how often that people just stop and they go, let me think. Yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> did you have <laughs> siblings? I did, and I do. Yes, and a pet. You currently have a pet. Uh, well, my kids have two pet fish called um, um, uh, Moby and Dick. No, no, it's <laughs> um, now I'm struggling to remember. Um, what's Iron Man's name? Um, uh, anyway, they're Marvel characters. There you All go. All right. Yeah, <laughs> you you stumped me there. Uh, <laughs> speaking of kids, yeah, do you have kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three kids, um, two two older girls and one little boy. It's uh, they keep you very grounded and humble. Uh, man, parenting for sure. We'll do that to you. Uh, what time do you wake up in the morning? Uh, my alarm is permanently set for five thirty a.m. And um, I would like to say most of the time I am up around something like that. Uh, every now and then I'm going to sleep in because it's been a big day. I might have been out having those drinks. <laughs> There you go. Well, the doctor, the doctor will see you tomorrow morning. So <laughs> That's tell me right. about uh, what time you go to go to bed in the evening. Uh, worst habit in the world. I fall asleep in the chair watching YouTube or something. It's terrible. So uh, that is a habit I must fix. <laughs> Too well, late. Yeah, I know there's late. consultancy, this advisory firm in, in uh, Australia that can help walk you through that. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I need to, yes, I need that. Tell me your ideal vacation spot. Yeah, there's um there's a couple Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> um it's it it's not one spot, but it would be a beach, it would be blue water, um, it would have the family there. Um and so uh, you know, we often find ourselves in those environments. And being in Australia, you don't have to go too far to find that. I was gonna that. say you're you're what, ten minutes away from getting the car yeah. you're there. So <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. So we're very, very blessed. Um, but it, yeah, it's it's beach, it's blue water, it's palm trees. Um, so it's either local postcard. or postcard kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's we're a couple of hours flight to places like Fiji and Vanuatu and um, so you know, it's a bit special. Tell me if uh how does faith affect how you live? Wow, that's a big question. Um, uh, it it is the grounding of uh, who I am. Um, uh, we all have a worldview, um, and uh, it's a uh, it's something that you either just absorb and take on, or that you stop and actively think about. And I've had a few times in my life where I've had to step, stop, step back, and actively think about that. Um, so yeah, I definitely, um, uh, you know, hold a, um, and have thought through those big questions of life. Um, and I'll tell you what it does do. It makes you realize that the risks you can take are far bigger than what you ever thought you could do, because sometimes the failures are far smaller than what you realize. What a, what a great answer. What a, what an interesting answer. Tell me, uh, those that's a whole other podcast that's a whole other <laughs> podcast for sure mate we have uh we crossed crossed so many bridges and 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 talked about so many different subjects but uh in in one or two lines just close this out today with with how you would like to wrap this up something that we haven't touched on just really quickly 
Well, I, I was sitting here thinking I really didn't kind of deliver the why should a, a MarTech or a marketing agency or a sales agency use Waymaker? And so let me just hit that nail on the head. Um, uh, what we bring to, you know, coaches, consultants, marketing agencies is a, a method, a system, a platform that helps you build consistent, regular advisory services and fees. So it's not about taking you off your core, although sometimes it can become your core and, ha and has done. Um, but what we do is we give you a way of charging for the high value advisory that too often is given away for free because you're doing your other things. And, mm. uh, and so we can add tens of thousands of dollars to an agency's bottom line um, for literally very little overhead. And, uh, and that's the great value proposition of our partner program. So we can jump in and talk about that another time, but, uh, that's, that'd be the why you would, you would look at Waymaker. Just, just capitalizing on, like you said, maybe services that they may be providing already, you know, just how do you <laughs> leverage that? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually the crazy thing. Um, it's like, let me show me your diary and then I'll show you the ten twenty thousand dollars $20,000 that you didn't bill last month because you didn't have a way of wrapping that up. And, um, uh, you know, that's a, when you can repeat that every month, that's a quarter of a million dollars just off one or two clients that, um, that you can put straight into your, your consultancy. Well, if, if they didn't hear anything else, I promise you their ears perked up there at the last when you used <laughs> make, that, make that was <laughs> quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> we should have started with that, shouldn't we? We should have started with that. In your diary that you just have not been capitalizing on. But man, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there's an awesome marketing agency sitting out there going, we better reach out to Stu so he gets that pitch at the start <laughs> well, of the podcast next time. Up and post <laughs> and tell me how to get in touch with this guy. So that's exactly right. Speaking of getting in touch with him, those, uh, how, how, the best way is that way, waymaker.io. Um, yeah, jump on also on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, just search waymaker.io or Stuart Leo on LinkedIn. You'll get me um, Twitter at Stuart Leo, which I'm terrible at. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, follow us on LinkedIn. Um, you can jump on, create a free trial if you want to um, as a partner. Um, uh, you know, if you do that, we'll reach out and our team will, or I'll book a meeting and say hi. Um, you know, we're, we're here to support, here to talk to you. We're a technology first company, but we want to talk and work with our clients wherever they are in the world. Well, Stuart, man, it's so good to reconnect and, and, uh, really just, I, you've unpacked so much in a, in a, such a short period of time. And I know that, uh, you know, speaking of billable time, I mean, thanks for taking billable hours out of your day and <laughs> to chat with us. But once again, we want to thank you for joining us on another episode of the marketing umbrella podcast, where we chat with marketing experts, providing insights to help agency owners scale and grow their marketing agencies. Please connect with the founder of Umbrella, Itamar Shafir at UmbrellaUS.com. Stuart, thank you again and have a great day, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we provide the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. To learn more, go to UmbrellaUS.com.